Right, question 21, always oh, toughy uh, graph ones. Um, now the information we have is the gradient is 3 over 2. And what that actually means is that the bottom number is the x move. So it means as you move 2 across, you move 3 up on the y. So I'm going to take point P here, um, just expand it down here slightly. So point P is 2, 1. And we've then got a point Q somewhere around here, which is 14 and then K. So we know that we've moved across from 2 to 14, so we know we've moved 12 across. But if you think of it this way, the gradient between these this line is, is 2 across and 3 up. So if we go 2 across, 3 up, 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 I've gone 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 across, actually 6 times, which is 12, which is the gap. So I've then gone 3 up. 3 up, 3 up, 3 up, 3 up, and 3 up. So I'm going 3 up 6 times. So that gives me 18 there. 18 moves up. I've started at 1 because 0, 0, if you think of it on there, there's your axis. So 0, 0 is here. So I've actually gone 2 across and 1 up. So I've started at 1 up as it was. So actually K is going to be 19 because it's, it's 18 up from the 1. So K there. Is your 19. If your gradient came up as 7, just to explain that, it's actually 7 over 1, which means as you go 1 across, you go 7 up. So if you just get a single number as, you, as your gradient, it means 1 across and that. Equally, if there's a negative gradient, so say minus uh, 7 over 4, then that would be meaning 4 across and then 7 down. So you go 4 across and then 7 downwards, therefore getting a negative gradient of slope. Your answer is case uh, 19. Question 22. This is looking like a circle theory question here. So we've got circumference of a circle. Um, this is called a cyclic quadrilateral A, B, C, and D. So the opposite angles, this angle here with this angle, will add up to 180. Equally, C with A will also add up to 180. Now let's just see what we need to do. The angle A or C is 168. So it wants us to work out the angle of ADC. So this angle is the thing we're looking for. Well, the angle subtended to the centre, if you've got like a sort of arrow happening here, angle B then will be half the amount of what it's just subtended to the centre. So here's the centre, here's the angle on the outside. So if we half 168, that will give us 84 degrees. So 84 degrees is B. Now we know it's a cyclic quadrilateral um, and it also gives reasons for your working. So angle subtended to centre is double subtended to circumference. And we also know that cyclic quad that we've got here, opposite angles equal 180 degrees added up, so this and this added together, so therefore B plus D equal 180 degrees, and I know that B is 684, so if I take 84 off 180, that will give me then 96 as my answer, so for angle angle D there, or ADC if you like, using the proper terminology, ADC is then 96. Question 23, uh, Sally has a bag of nine sweets. In the bag there are um, three orange, four strawberry, two lemon. Sally takes a sweet at random, two takes at random two of the sweets, she eats the sweets. Work out the probability that two sweets Sally eats are not of the same flavour. So this one you sort of start scratching red. Now personally, what I always like to draw here is just a very quick sketch of a tree diagram. So she's picking two options. So we've got um, orange, strawberry and lemon. So orange, strawberry, lemon, orange, strawberry, lemon, 
orange, strawberry, lemon. Now the chance of picking an orange here is 3 out of 9, 4 out of 9, and then 2 out of 9. We've also then got this chance now, because she's picked an orange, there's only 2 out of 8 chance then, because 1 orange has been picked. There's still 4 strawberries this way, and there's still 2 lemons. This one she's picked a strawberry, so orange, there's still 3 out of 8 left here. Strawberry, we've only got 3 out of 8 left, and 2 out of 8. This time she picked a lemon, so we've still got 3 out of 8 oranges, we've all got all the 4 strawberries, and we've only got 1 lemon left, sorry, out of 8 sweets. So what's the probability that the 2 sweets are not the same? Personally, I'd go along the route of same, 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 and then same, and same. So that S should have gone a bit lower down. I'll just redraw that out again. So orange and orange, then strawberry and strawberry, and then lemon and lemon. And then take those answers off one, because the other, all the other routes are when you wouldn't get the same flavours. So we've got probability of O and O, well that's 3 ninths times by 2 eighths, equally you could go down all the other routes, add them all up at the end, that then gives you 6 over 72, probability of S and S is 4 ninths and 2 eighths, that gives you 8 over 72, and probability of L and L. That's 2 ninths times by 1 eighth. 2 times 1 is 2. 8 times 9 is 72. So we then add the fractions together. That goes 14 16 over 72. So if I then do the probability of not the same, so if I take 1 away from all of that, because that's what, what the other ones will be when they add up, Basically, 16 takes 72. Um, so we're then looking at 56 out of 72 is your answer. That'll then cancel you half that out of 36. Half that's 25, 28. It will half again to give you 14 out of 18. And it will half again to give you 7 out of 9. So 7 ninths there is the probability. Um, you can leave it down at this point as 56 over 72, that shouldn't be an issue. I'm sorry, I just had a quick look at the answer. I've, I've made a slight area, here, haven't I? Um, I couldn't read my writing properly, that's actually a 3 in there. So that would be a 3. That would give us 12 there. So that would actually be another 4 on top of what we had. Which makes it actually easier to work out. So let's scribble all this out. It will then give us 52 out of 72. Sorry for the, uh, the slight error on that bit. You can cancel it down, but it's not expecting you to. So that would then be uh, our answer there, 52 out of 72. Again, I've got marks from the answers, because I've done clear working out, but I don't want to go all four. Question 24. So we've got 3x minus 2 plus 8 x plus 3, and then equals 2. Personally, you can call it what you like, uh, cross times in, or these things come up here, and both of these go on to the side. That's the way I've always taught this. Um, we're basically times everything through by both parts. So we times out... Um, this first one gives us 3x plus 9. 8 times x is 8x. Eight, 8 times minus 2 is minus 16. This side we're using either the claw or whichever method you prefer. So I'll leave the 2 on the outside. x times x is x squared. x times 3 is 3x. 2 times x is minus 2x. And minus 2 times 3 is minus 6. Collect the x's together, so that gives us 11x. 9 take away 16 is minus 7. 2 and bracket x squared, put the x's together, we're just left with 1x minus 6. 
So 11x minus 7 times the 2 in now. So I get 2x squared plus 2x minus 12. I take all the numbers to the other side, so we end up with a quadratic. So I've got 2x, add the 11 onto the 30. So I take the 11 off, which gives you 9x, and add the 7 on to the minus 12. That'll then give you minus 5. Um, we can now factorise this. So we've got 2x here and an x. And then we look at the numbers times together, give us 5. We've only got 1 and 5. So 5 goes in here, and it's going to give us minus 9. Minus 5 times gives us minus 10 plus 1 times x gives us the one we need. So our x values then, to make this equal to 0, um, put 5 in there and makes that equal to 0, so it's 5 or minus a half. There are two solutions. Finally, 25, we have a vector question here. So we've got a trapezium, and we are told that PS it is parallel to um, QR and QR QR here is twice that of PS now we know that P to S is B so Q to R will then be 2B and it's double the distance and we know that P to Q is A X is the point on QR so x is the point on qr here, such that ox is three amounts and xr is one amount. Express in terms of a and b, pr. So p going to r, first of all. So all you do with this is, it's like we're on a journey, basically. How do I go from p to r? Well, I can walk along pq and then walk on qr. So walk along pq gives me a. And I'm then just going to add walk along QR, which is 2B. So that's the first one covered. We are then um, looking at our next part. Which is um, express SX. So we're going S here to x. So the first step to think about this is the route I'm going on. So I'm just going to draw in red. So I'm going across here first. Then I'm going up here and then I'm going a bit across here. Now firstly three parts to one. So we're actually going across here. It's split into four equal bits. So this will be 0 0.5b and this here will be 1.5b because three parts and one, so four parts divided by two gives you 0.5 or a half. So we're then going to go from S to X. So walking along here, first we're walking against the normal pathway of B, which is actually minus B. Then adding A. And then we're going the same way and we're adding 1.5B. That will then give us minus 1 plus 1.5. We've got an A here, and we've actually got a half B left. Because if you're at minus 1, if you want to put a 1 in there and add in, add in 1.5, you'll just be left with 0.5B. And there's your solution.